Hey guys, well it's that time again, time to take a front suspension apart on a Plymouth, or a Dodge in this case. Uh, I don't know if this is necessarily going to be a step by step on this, but uh, just give you the highlights of this. This is just your standard disc brake front end, torsion bar suspension, you can see the torsion bar back there, tie rods here. Uh, upper A arm here, shock there, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the exact same thing I did on the other car, the Plymouth, the white one. Uh, I'm just going to have to basically rebuild this suspension. Uh, as you can see, there's got some torn boots on the ball joint, upper ball joint, and uh, tie rod ends are probably a little sloppy. You can see over there, it looks like they're pretty worn. The boots are pretty worn. Uh, that's the outer arm right there that you see. We'll replace that. Uh, looks like it may have been replaced once already. It's got a Zerk fitting on it, but not too sure. But this is not a hard job. Uh, but everything just has to basically come off of here. Uh, a arm has to come off. Uh, and the hardest part to doing it is getting the torsion bar. You have to release the tension on the torsion bar via the screw, the bolt that you can see right in there. You have to, uh, to completely unwind that bolt and let it torsion bar relax and then you have a clip back here at the back end of it that you take out it's up in this little recess right there you probably can't see it but it's just a little wire clip if it's still there it should be you take that out and clean that cavity out and then you can uh, start getting the torsion bars pushed back and it's not real easy so I'll show you the highlights of that but I'm just going to start taking the I guess I'll take the steering box out take that out I'm probably gonna probably gonna take this whole K member out because this I've got another one and this one's got a dent in it right here and I'm not so sure that it might not have tweaked that a little bit because it sure has pulled it but it really needs to be it needs to come out anyway there's the there's the end of the torsion bar right there and you can see that bushing what kind of shape it's in in there that's why it's got to be replaced that's the lower control arm bushing that's your what to call the adjuster blade right here and so I'm sure you probably already know a torsion bar basically works by twisting it's just a long piece of metal there and it's a spring action by twisting so the thing is about getting these out and working with torsion bars is you do not want to make marks on them like you don't want to just clamp them with vice grips or hammer on them or anything like that's going to create a, a mark on them because that can that can that can create a stress fracture and the whole thing can snap so you have to be very careful with that um, Lots of times you can get this. I found when you get these, everything unbolted and you get the arms off, you can usually, uh, once it's relaxed, you can just kind of take a rubber mallet or something, kind of start working it backwards and tap, tap, tap on that and it'll just kind of come on out. So just be patient. And these are your strut rods over here. This kind of locates your front end arm, lower arm. And I've always had trouble with these because I forget how they come out and what it is is they've got a a nut right there and let me back up here sorry about that whoops where, where am I yeah there we go there's the end of it it's got a nut on it right there but they have to go forward they will not come backwards that's just the way it is on those so take that nut off and take the other nut off and start working it out so, alright I'll be back with this Okay, let me show you real quick about uh, relaxing these torsion bars. I just cranked the bolt, which is here. See the end of it there? It's kind of uh, right around right there. <clears throat> and I've got it cranked out until I'm sure there's no tension on it. You see, I can turn it easily with my hand. And this is just rattling around. You see, 
that there. There's no, well, let me if you can see. Okay, that's when you know you got it all the way relaxed. So that way there's no tension on this assembly now. All right, the caliper is off. Just got a bolt here, a bolt here, I think it's a half inch. There's the caliper. I don't ever try to use these anymore because they're known, you know, when they're this old, they're probably well in their way to have rusted up if they're not already rusted. So basically to me, they're cores. You'll need to turn them in as a core. So next thing is going to be probably to, let's see. This is the caliper bracket here. I might go ahead and take that off just to make it easy to get to things here. So I'll do that. Okay, caliper bracket is off. There it is there, there's two bolts. Holds it on right here. So that's out of the way now. Next is gonna be the uh, bolts that hold the lower control arm to the uh, spindle bracket assembly here. All right, I need to correct myself here. I said we're gonna do these next, but this is actually a bolt and a nut here, so there's no way to stop this. You can't just take the nut off of it. So what you need to do is you can either take the rotor off, which I'm not gonna do because I wanna keep it all as an assembly for right now, or uh, probably what we can do also is, I think the route I'm gonna go, I've already taken the nut off this upper ball joint, and I'm just gonna separate this from my ball joint separator and then that'll let this kind of swing out this caliper should swing out then rotor i mean and be able to get to this one and then we'll just unbolt it that way make it a little bit easier okie dokie here's my separator in place and i just broke this one loose just whacked it with a hammer several good times and it popped loose so now i'm gonna go ahead and get this uh separated all the way here now you're probably going to see this thing uh, kind of flop apart here so I don't think it's a big deal yeah let's see if I can do this one handed here okay. let me just take a little help up a little bit here yep there we go now I can get to this take this loose and that'll be this whole assembly will come off as you can see this ball joint wasn't too bad but you know, the boot was broken on it so you just want the boots broken on there you got to replace them because they will they will get worse and the upper bushings on this seem pretty good but I'm gonna replace those as well because you know the job a good job once a bad job twice so what I have to usually do is I have to take this arm and lower arm also because it's actually got a bush and that one back there is going to be pressed in and out. But these two here and on the other arm have to be pressed in and pressed out with a press. And then this one, they got a big giant socket they can put on here with an air tool and get this to send screws. But it's too much for me to deal with because I don't have one of those here at the house. So. I just drop them off at the machine shop on my way to work one day, and by the time I get off work, they're all done. Cost me about, uh, I think about fifty dollars for all of it. Okay, I got to a stopping point. Sun's going down, and my stomach's telling me it's time to get cleaned up and get to the stove. So I tell you, this lower ball joint is really in there. And it kind of makes sense because it's taken 40 years of impacts and everything, just driving it up in there. So I started out with a hammer, didn't work. Got the BFH, that didn't work. So now I'm on to the really big BFH. And if you wonder what BFH means, just Google it and find out. Uh, got all that done. I'll get back on this tomorrow. I'm going to kind of run a little yard sale tomorrow with some car parts. So I'll be doing that and doing this too. So I'll get back on this and get a fresh start and I'll get this thing off tomorrow. There's no stopping me on this. I've done this before. I've been on this battlefield before and no way this is going to get me. So stay tuned. See ya.